Okay, today we're going to be going over how to scrape Google Maps. So say we want to scrape all the auto repair shops in Austin, Texas. So let me just show you this working first. So we're using Puppeteer to launch this and it's just going to scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, I'm not doing anything. I'm not touching anything. You've reached the end of the list. And then it'll close shortly. And then we should have some beautiful JSON. Fantastic. Look at all of this. And we have, let's see here, uh, VIX Expert Tune Automotive. Let's check that out if it's legit. Yep. And that's his website. We have his website is really slow. Okay, Vic, you're killing me, dog. Let's see if these guys' website actually works. Boom, there we go. So yeah, you have address, category, phone number, Google URL, biz, website, store name, stars, number of reviews, boom. So how do we get there? So this is gonna be a technical implementation using Node.js and Puppeteer. And I'm going to um, put this all on, put this code on a GitHub gist in the description because, um, yeah, it's easier that way. I'll explain a little bit of my process, but, uh, yeah, if you just want to like copy paste that, you know, go for it. So the biggest thing that you're gonna have to do, this is all just easy setup for Puppeteer. And then one of the hardest things was doing the auto scroll and you're going to, one of the keys is to find this uh, div with the role of feed. And so that's obviously the feed that's going to scroll. And I just used ChatGPT to uh, get this. And it took a couple of iterations, but I think that this is uh, pretty good. So I'm not really going to bother explaining that because, frankly, I don't even really know exactly. I mean, I know what's going on, but don't know exactly how to explain it. So you're going to auto scroll there. And then you're just going to get the HTML. And we're going to parse it using Cheerio. Because yeah, once everything is scrolled, everything's going to be on the DOM. So you're going to get that HTML. And then this is kind of how I approached it is you're going to notice that these class names are all obfuscated. So they're not, most of them aren't nice class names. And so I assume that anytime Google deploys a new deployment, then those are going to change. So in my thinking, I'm my thought was... I doubt that the structure will change, but the class names will change. So let me go based off of the structure, uh, mostly. I do use class names, but they are like actual English uh, class names and not obfuscated. So one thing that I noticed is like here, all of them have these um, A tags. And I was thinking like, how can I easily target all of these items? Because as you can see, like, it's a div, div with this class name, with this JS action, hard to um, really attach onto something. But I noticed that they all have this A tag, and then obviously like all of the hrefs go to their details page, so that's slash map slash place. So what I do is I look for all of the A tags, get their href, and then see if they include slash places slash maps, and then, because you know obviously that that means it is one of those individual items. And then I actually get the parent because that's that parent div right here. And that div is gonna contain everything as you see like right here. So there's just this div, but I want this one right here. That's the parent one to this A tag. And then it, we can navigate around that to find everything that we need. So then we obviously know the URL, like the Google Maps URL. So we get that website. So I actually find this thing with data value website. So if you notice here, we have this A tag for their website, right? It's because that href goes to that site. And then I noticed that, yeah, they have this data value equals website. So English, obviously like fantastic. Let's try to use that. So then I just say, yeah, find an A tag with the data value website, get the href attribute store name yeah another kind of convenient one so we're gonna come here 
And we gotta navigate, yeah, so we don't want this tab, we want this div right here. And right here, so we're just gonna like navigate down. And then I noticed that this one has font headline small, another like English word that doesn't look like it's going to change. So I was like, oh, we'll just grab that. So div and with the class name of head font headline small, boom. And then for the rating, yeah, another thing. So I found a span with font body medium. So let's look at that one. Darn it, I can't. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Boom, right here. Yep, so this is the span, font, body, medium. And it's actually on like another span, roll image. But we're just going to get the area label. And then split by like stars, I think I do, to get like the rating text. Yeah, to get the stars, like this is a little uh, not the nicest code with these optional i forget what those are called actually but yeah we're just gonna split by stars and then get that information boom so there is the rating text and then the uh let's see address i think was a little bit hard to get address phone number and all that good stuff it was a little bit hard so all of that stuff is so i noticed that if we're going off of the structure here, where is that one? Yeah. So I went off of the structure to get all of the uh, the phone number and address and all of that good stuff. So here's the parent div that we're in. So I want to get the. Uh, yeah, the last div, that's exactly what I did. So I have the parent div, and then here are its children, and I got the last one right here. Then here's that, so this div, this is its children here, and then it looks like I want this one right here. So how did I say that? I said I want the last of that one. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, sorry, so forgot how I got that one. So you have this is the parent, and then this is the one that we're looking at, font, body, medium. I want this div right here, because this div has all the good stuff. So that's how I got it, is parent find div the class of font, body, medium. And I want to find the first one of that, because I think there are two of them here. So then I want to find that one's children. So this is the children right here, which obviously you can see has all of the good stuff. So I want the last child, which is what I did right here. And then I actually want right here, so I want the first child of that one. So I said last child, then I want first of last, and then I want last of last finally, which is right here. And then just get all of the uh, text within there. So that's how I have like, uh, I think category, because then you just split by that little uh, dot that they have. And then same with like phone. So first of last, yeah, and then like last of last. Anyway, I'll have all that code for you if you want that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. And then the only thing you're really missing, I believe, well, are the reviews and the full address. So these only have like partial address. And you can either scrape the, so if you go like, uh, copy link and new tab, and then go here, yeah, that's not good. Uh, open link and new tab. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly, but yeah, you could scrape this page or what I think I'm going to do is get the uh, Google Places API and just pass in the place ID and I forgot about that. So kind of interesting and really cool is Google actually returns the place ID in the Google URL. So all of them it looks like start with c h i so capital c lowercase h and uppercase i and that's how i get the place id and then you can pass that place id into the google maps api like the places api um, if you want to get additional information because that's uh, a lot easier than scraping and i believe really 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 cheap
Uh, so let me see where I do that at. Yeah, so I split by question. You get a, get rid of those query parameters. We don't we don't want anything after that question mark, like as you can see right here. So we don't want anything after that. And we're gonna split by this chai, C-H-I, and then add it at the beginning because we're splitting by it anyway. So yeah, you can get the place ID with that, which is like Google's, that's how they're keeping track of it. And then you can do stuff, you know, call the API with that place ID. It's really nice. And it looks like they're all C-H-I. I've only verified this for a couple different searches. So uh, keep that in mind. If it doesn't work, then don't come yelling at me. And if you need Google Maps scraped, I'm going to put this up on my website and have a service, I think, that scrapes everything. But if you need this scraped, then uh, for any reason, email me, adrian at countypropertydata.com. You know, we can set up a meeting and, yeah, if you need anything else scraped. And then I'll show in another video how to get emails from the, uh, the websites. If the website does have any emails listed anywhere in that website, then uh, we can find that. So I'll do that in another video.